We have a whole hour together, you and I. Our guest host also joining, uh, Alpesh Patel, principal at Profinium Partners, and he's with us for the hour as well. So get your emails in, strictlymoney at cnbc.com. Hello, Alpesh. Hi. How are you? I'm well, thank you. What are you thinking about these days? Uh, well, I've got some simple trades which uh, I think uh, in this market are going to work quite well. Um, some of them are pretty obvious, long euro against the dollar. Uh, you're going to get your fingers burnt in the short term a little bit on that one um, because everyone's talking about shorting the dollar, so obviously it's going to do the opposite. Uh, but over the next six months, that one's a, a, a good one. And another obvious one is, is long dollar over the next six to nine months and as it hits $2,000 uh, an ounce. Long, long, uh, long gold. gold. Long gold. Long gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so short to you, uh, sorry, long euro for the, yep. for, the, for the short to medium term, is that what yep, you're Yeah, for the next six to nine months. Yeah, and then... And long and gold long, as well, gold. which is obviously a play on the dollar as well. Well, yeah. because we're expecting the dollar to fall, but uh, independent of that, uh, gold will continue. And off the back of that, silver, if you want to take a slight bit more risk, but you'd like to get more reward with, with silver as yeah. well. Do you feel that you have, you have clarity on the markets now, uh, more clarity than, than what we had six months ago? Absolutely. Um, some trades are becoming increasingly clear. I think with the S&P, we're still looking for about another 10% rise uh, by the end of the year. Uh, in the short term, which means in the next week, we're going to get something of a sell-off because it is toppy and there is indirection, as we heard from your previous um, uh, guests. Uh, so you will get a little bit of a sell-off in the next week, but I wouldn't want to time that. I'd rather be on the sidelines watching a potential sell-off, but taking the view that by the end of the year we should be up another 10% on the S&P, not least because 86% of the companies which have announced earnings in the U.S. so far yeah. uh, have been earning surprises. Uh, the second company that you, you want to talk about. Yeah, a company called Cryosave. Um, it's a biobanking uh, specialist. They specifically store umbilical cord blood um, from newborns. Um, umbilical cord blood? Yeah, yeah. It, it's a bit difficult to roll out <laughs> in terms of... It no, no, come I off just have to get my head either. around the concept. Yeah, okay. so yeah. the idea is uh, to store uh, cord blood in, in the event that one of the children... Uh, so this is at birth, and it can only be done at birth uh, for obvious reasons. Now, the, the, the cord blood is stored as a almost an insurance policy uh, against the child contracting some form of disease in the future. It's currently used already for about 80 indications, so for 80 disorders, and mostly they're blood-based disorders. Disorders, and in some cases, some neurological disorders such as uh, cer cerebral policy. Um, but every year, that list is growing. So people are now storing this. This is a private storage service. The people okay. pay about 2,000 euros up front and have their children's uh, cord blood stored for about a 20-year period. Yeah. Interesting. They are indeed. We, we, from our private equity funds, have made a couple of investments into healthcare companies in the yeah. U.S., which we can then flip into the growth story in the emerging markets so that we boost up their sales. Yeah. With, with, with both of these, um, given the, the tightness of, um, uh, for instance, National Health Service spending in the UK and, and uh, the pressures on, on public spending in healthcare, yeah. um, where do you see the growth coming for these types of uh, products? Well, specifically in the case of CryoSave, it's a private service, so it's entirely privately rolled out, and it's uh, actually quite, the market is quite underpenetrated. In Europe, it's only about 1% of the market is actually, 1% of all newborns have their cord blood stored. So you can imagine how much more market there is to go after in the private space. Uh, in terms of vitamin D testing, diagnostic testing only improves healthcare. It only reduces costs. If you can actually identify a problem before it arises through, you know, proper testing, it can only improve healthcare and reduce